trip out there and swimming and camping with Amanda for the last day of the weekend is more than welcome. She's been trying to talk me into going out there for the whole weekend. Uh, school's getting ready to be over. Everybody knows that too. And Father's Day is coming up. So, uh, Sissy, did you get a bulletin? Yeah. I don't, June 21st at Dad's, what time? I didn't have the time for Deborah's open house. So we put on the invitation. spoken, Lord God, that you said that if I would speak your words, you would empower me. So, Father, I'm here to speak your word today. And I ask to be empowered, Lord. Lord God, I ask you to confirm your words, Lord, as you said, with signs and miracles, Lord. As you said you would. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Is that on? Yeah, that's better. Oh, there's a mute session. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. That's better. Learn something new today. Uh, it's Ezekiel 37. Anybody wants to turn to it and read it with me? Yeah, I've so it's very heard this past couple past month or two. The Lord's been dealing with me in several different la layers of this verse. For example, our church is the dry bones.
feeling a little dry. It's the worst one I ever had. You know, even our finances are dried up. They're, they're dry as bones. You know? And we just been barely scraping by. But the Lord takes me out past us. It shows me the community. Not just this community, but every community in this country. The thousands and millions of Christians that once walked with our Lord. That once had a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have an enemy that comes to come to kill and destroy. And he's destroyed many, he's killed many. And I don't know if you've ever gone through a dry season. But you don't hear the voice of the Lord. You don't feel his spirit. There is millions of people around this country right now that are in that situation. That life that was born in them, that new life, in one way or the other, has been killed. They knew what it was once to walk with the Lord. They once felt that joy. But now they walk around as dry bones. There's an army of believers out there. Just like it says, a valley of bones. Amen. There's an army of them out there that are dead. For some reason or another, they got the life snuffed out of them. They're still living and breathing. And they're physically functioning, but their spirits are dropped. And if you've ever been there, there's a voice in you that cries out. That cries to be, to be fed again. The cries, like the ground cries out for what moisture. Absolutely. And they are. They, 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 they do that every day. They wake up every morning. They don't know what it is. They don't know what that hunger is. They don't know what that quietness is. Because that's a quietness that is so loud and deafening. Mm -hmm. If you can understand that. Mm -hmm. If you ever stepped away from the Lord or something happened and that's broke that relationship, you just feel, you just feel the emptiness and the quietness that just deafens you. Because you're not, you don't hear that, that precious voice of the Lord. You don't feel that unction of the Spirit. It was once there. Then you get desperate. You start looking for something to fill it. And I went back to the world looking for places to fill it. But more I went, the hunger I got, the drier I became. Because you know, there's that little ember inside you that knows. And you can't rest. But we're talking about thousands and thousands of people just in this area. That need that refreshment. That are those dry bones. That we as a church today are going to speak. Because this is going to be a congregational day here. This is going to be, you guys don't have to pitch in. Because we're going to speak to the four winds. And we're going to call for life. We're going to call for life for this body. And for the body of believers out there that God wants to call back. He has an army. He has an army that he wants to raise up. And it's not going to come from the church pews. It's going to come from the streets. Because if you serve the Lord, and if you've fallen away, and by his loving grace you come back, 
It sets a fire in you. Because you know his love then. What does the word say? Then what if you're given much, love much? That's right. But see, this is where the this is where the thing of grace comes in. Because I have ministered and talked to so many people through the years that have once walked through the Lord, but have heard so many times. And I'm a victim of it. The one reason is I didn't come back because of the verse that says, uh, once you have tasted of the heavenly gifts, there's no place for repentance. I have no place to go. I couldn't repent and come back. According to the, the word and the way I was taught, I, I flowed in the gifts of the Spirit. So there's no way for me to come back. I was damned. I was, I was driving home. But see, there's a difference between the law, which should kill me, and grace. Absolutely. And grace. See, we're not under the law, we're under grace. And God is looking for a church that wants to accept the grace. See, if we start getting people in here that, okay, are still in the world. I don't know how many of you guys, when you got saved or got rededicated your lives, were perfect. I ain't there yet. One day I may be. I'll probably be dead 10 years before that happens, but. But see, this one thing we're coming to. A realization that there is life in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Amen. And we are the body that's going to extend that life through grace. How many prophecies have been given lately where God says, when I bring them, remember where you came from. See, if you remember where you came from, that's going to cut out judgment. That's right. You see, these people have been judged already. They judged themselves. That's why they're dry. A lot of them. And a lot of them have had church people. Some of them might have been doing it by thinking they're doing something good that have hurt yep. and have killed that life that they had in them. And if you had to deal with people that's been hurt by the church, there's a spirit about that yep. It does not want to let go. It's tough. It is. It's so hard to break. It's so true. Okay. Oh. We got to pray for the gift to get that broke. Rocky ground. It's the ground that was trod on too much. Because yeah. my vision for this church, what the Lord has showed me, was not a bunch of happy go church goers. You know, we're not going to get the, the church goers from Brethren Church and all that come here. We're going to get the ones that need church. that love me no matter what. If, if I came in hungover because I wasn't living right, if I came in crying and bawling my eyes out because something wasn't right in my life, that man loved me every day. He would stop the service and come up and hug on me. You know, that's the kind of church I want here. Where if there's somebody hurt in this congregation, nothing else matters. 
The, the supper, the dinner at 12.30 doesn't matter. The worship service started at 11.30 doesn't matter. That person matters. Mm -hmm. That family matters. We're going to love them. If we don't get to church service, if we, if we don't get to the message that day, if we don't get to the worship that day, if we spend it with this person that needs us, we're having church. We're having the church Jesus Christ has anointed. <clears throat> and I tell you, that's the kind of service that I want. I want a church service like that every day. Where it's not me up here, but it's Jesus Christ moving amongst his people, meeting needs through his people. If you're going to see miracles and stuff here, don't, don't, don't wait for the preacher to uh, start it. Miracles are going to start out here. You know, we've been programmed that, you know, the spirit falls from here and goes out. Well, that's wrong. The spirit falls from there and comes out. It comes in the congregation, it comes up to the preacher. You know, once it's, once it's up here, we realize that. You understand what the anointing really is. The anointing's here. That's why God's here. He's not here because <coughs> I'm a great man, I'm a preacher, because I'm, I'm up here preaching because of you. And it's your spirits that need that. And it's your spirits lifting up Jesus Christ that Amen. fills this room with Jesus. I have to say that's why I don't agree with the first statement he said about it doesn't matter if we get to worship or preaching if we reach out to this one person because everybody here came here to be fed and to get that fellowship and to get that worship. So if we single out one person and spend our whole time there, then that leaves everybody else them out. Them that so water to water. I, I'm just... Yeah, them that are water to water. Right. But if, if we're see. not watering, then... Yeah, but I'm just saying, but if we're spending this day, if we're spending this time with this person, we're being watered. Spend the day praying with somebody uh -huh. and holding them. Yeah, and then you feel like a dry and weary land. At least that's how I feel. It sucks everything out of me, and then I even more need that worship and fellowship with other saints to, to that will come. Man. That'll come. So we're done. We, we come. Maybe we get back into worship. I mean, uh, clock don't even work. So why are we worried about it? I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Quite some time. <laughs> you know. I agree with the not worrying about the time so much, but not completely. But it, it, isn't that what we want? We don't want God to have control. Amen. Because Jim, like the other day, he's going. What time? I want to take that watch with me, boy. You know, after 20 minutes, though, so people stop listening. Yeah. Scientific. <laughs> okay, I'm going to quit talking. Preach, Dad. <laughs> okay, but it says, uh, I never got to my, what I was going to read you. Your scripture, yeah. And he said, uh, and he caused me to pass around about seeing all the old, there were very many open in the valley. They were dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Then he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the word of the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter unto you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and ye will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. You know, and that's the greatest thing. God brings them to life. They will know who He is. When you're set in the great darkness and you see that light, that's what we're calling on. But see, here's the point where I tell you, I struggle with and here's what the Lord has been telling me. He keeps telling me, keeps beating it in my head. 
said that, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord, God, thou knowest. Because see, Ezekiel was the same place I was at. He couldn't see it. He just seen dry bones. He seen the valley of dry bones. And in my natural mind, life is gone. They're, they're bones, they're fertilizer. Crush them up, put them on the field, but then you they wouldn't have life. You know? Bring be some uh, substance to something. It'll be bone meal. But no. Ezekiel had to say it from his heart. God, you know. And here's the great thing I'm trying to get to the congregation for what we're going to do later. And what God's bringing to me. He said, I never told Ezekiel to have faith. I told Ezekiel to speak. <laughs> and see, that's another thing. When, when we get to the place where God's giving you something to do, where he's telling you to go pray for somebody, or he's telling you to give somebody a word of encouragement, he's not telling you to have faith to do it, faith for anything to happen. He's telling you to go do it. That's right. That's all he's asking you to do. Just be obedient. <coughs> That's the only thing. He'll take care of the rest. You know, doesn't it say that uh, I look over my word for before what I had will. Mm -hmm. And that's all he's telling you to do. Just, just speak my word, I'll take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. You do your part, I do mine. Yeah. We gotta stop trying to be doing his part. That's right. And I'm guilty of it. I mean, I'm here this morning. I, I, I had to have Celia pray for me this morning because I was really nervous about giving this one because it's this is above my faith level. And because I hear a little bit, I'm going to ask you people to get up and we're going to speak to the four winds to bring life. So you're calling on our faith? No. I'm calling you just to speak life. You don't have to have, like God just told me, remember, he said, you don't have to have the faith. Just speak my words. Right on. That's right. Just speak life. Absolutely. Call for life to come. Absolutely. Call for them that need that watering, that need that life put back into them. Call for that, that breath from the four winds to come wherever they are. When we first opened, when we first came into this church, tell you how powerful words are. What did the Lord speak to us? The death was in these walls. And it was. And you could feel it. You could feel the oppression pushing in on you. It was hard to worship in here. It was upsetting, sure. It took a couple years. But the Lord said, with praise and worship and words of life, you would drive it out. We've driven it out. Amen. It's on these walls now. Amen. Absolutely. But it's now it's time for us to now to speak past these walls. Right. Good word. Good word. To speak life to come. Speak to the former rains to come. That wasn't in my sermon originally, but it just came. The former rains to come. That's where we're at today. We had our winter. We had our season of dry bones. Most of us didn't think we'd be here this week after what the winter has been. Yeah. But praise God, God has kept us here. Mm -hmm. He's worked miracles. He's worked things out. Now we're still here. We're struggling, barely making it. Not even making it. Not even making it. But I ask everyone here, has God said anything to anybody about closing the doors? Has God said there was this was the end of it?
as he changed his mind for the first vision of this church. As he said, no, you guys, are, I'm taking your candle away. I haven't heard it. Celia, have you heard a word? Brandon? You have me either? Sarah? Have you heard a word? Abby? You guys spoke to you anything about the church? Okay, closing. about that. I said, you need to speak about the finances to come. The people that he's called to be here to come. You see, we have an enemy that wants us to fail, that would love for us to fall yes. apart. Yes. And the one thing he showed me, about myself anyway, see, he puts this doubt in my heart and I don't speak the things I need to be speaking. I need to be speaking about the, these pews full and the hurting people that are going to be filled with. And the help that will come. Because God has prepared us. He has prepared us to fade away slowly and whimper away. He has prepared us for a day of resurrection. Amen. See, we're going to be a resurrection church. A church that knows what it feels like to be down. A church that knows what it feels like to scrape. A church that knows what it feels like to hurt. To have your heart ripping out of your heart, out of your chest. And almost everyone has been in here felt that. You don't even know where your breath is going to come from because it hurts so bad. Amen. And see, those are people we're going to be ministering to. We probably won't be ministering to people driving up in Cadillacs. Like a good doctor would take care of. <clears throat> but we're going to be ministering to them that we minister to. Whatever they are. It said, consider not their state when you minister to them. Paul admonished on that because some people make the one set at their feet and everything. But we're going to be a body that the lowest is the highest. Level ground here. A kingdom of priests. Right? Where that guy you know, everyone's got, the, got a voice here. You know, and, and it's, it's hard for me to imagine what it's going to be like when this place is falling, keeping this closeness like we have now. But God says it's doable. He showed me a vision of a church of 5,000. I can't, I can't imagine the parking lot, how big the parking lot would be, let alone the building. And let alone the logistics of taking care of it. But I have that vision. I don't have nothing else to go with it. But I have that vision. But 5,000 seat church. Somewhere in this area. The Goshen Marine area. And uh, I can't, I can't, 
in my mind, and just like this speaking today, I, I cannot comprehend it. It's above my comprehension. But God knows. You know us, Lord. And that's where I am today. God, you know. You know these dry bones live. And see, they're going to live because of grace. It's taking time for, I've been preaching and speaking grace for 20 years, and I finally hear ministers catching up. <laughs> and it really, it really, you know, inspires my heart, saying, gee, God, I guess you were right now. You know, because after a while, you start wondering, well, God, all that teaching, was that really you? He don't care about the tattoos. He don't care about the earrings. That's right. The adulterous woman and the woman at the well, he didn't care. He didn't care. What he cared about was their heart. He cared about their soul. Amen. start walking like Jesus, Jesus has no problem showing up. You know why? Because he went through every one of us. Our hands are his hands. He doesn't have to worry about waiting for Carrie to be ready to lay hands on somebody because he called on Rachel. He called call on Rachel's. He called on Gail. He called on Celia. He's not going to be bound by regulations that we have put in place. <clears throat> I haven't even been in a church service where things got to be in a certain order. I was a church service you want to pray for, you had to go over to a little corner. Service went on, but somebody go over and pray for you. You know, hey, somebody over here needs prayer. pray for Somebody go over and pray for you. No, it's Come on, let's pray. But I've experienced it here. I've experienced that very same thing here. You guys touched the top of the service and I was laying on the floor back there. The whole service, the whole church came back and prayed for me. I laid hands on me. And I was prophesied over. See, those things like that change people's hearts. They change their lives in a, in a moment. That's where we're going. That's where we're headed. So, Anthony, would you come on and pray a little bit? Uh, we're going to have to meet up here so after we're done, just everybody, just feel like one wants you to communion with him for a minute, have communion. But I'm just asking everybody to just... Stand up in your place or go in the corner and just take a few minutes and speak out loud things we were talking about. For the words to come. Speak for them people that want that are to be here, to be here. You see, we gotta bust out these walls. They're clean now, but God's ready to spread out. Be like speakers. 
loudspeakers today. These walls are loudspeakers today. They're no longer just holy stuff in. They're going to be spreading it out. Cool. They're going to be spreading it out because the words you're going to be speaking today are spirit.
for the gifts of the Spirit to come. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Let it come forth, Lord. Lord, let it come forth. Life, life, come. Life, come. Finances, come. Souls, come. Healing, come. Miracles, come. Rain, Lord, the form of rain to fall. Life and life more abundant. For your grace, Father. Come. Holy Spirit, come. call to them that are in darkness to come. We call to them that are dry and weary to come. Dry bones, pick up your life. Dry bones, pick up your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Speak life to these bones. Sing to them. Dry bones, pick up your life. Yes, 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 Lord. Father, you are the God of the heart of harvest. You are the God of the harvest.
just want to thank you for all the ways that you bless us. For all the ways that you strengthen me and that you empower my life. And make me possible.